The objective was pretty clear. Win and put yourself in the best possible position to grab top spot in the group. Lose and give Juventus a lifeline heading into their final matchup next week. So Coleman went with a starting 11 that said, I want to win the group. Griezmann, Sergio Busquets, and Pjanic, Dembele, Alba, and Langley all started in this match. Trincao, where did Trincao? I think I might actually try Trincao. Did the press conference prior to the match, so the firm expectation was that he would also start, which he did. So with what I would call probably the best starting 11 in terms of experience and overall quality that Coleman could have selected, Barcelona were clearly hungry and going for it early. The first real action in this game as Barca were on the front foot came on a desk cross to Brothwaite as Barca pinned the Hungarians back. Not sure if that happens with Sergio Roberto and whoever is playing the number 9, so if you have a right back that is willing to get forward and a number 9 whose sole job is to just cause havoc between the center backs and make runs to the near and far post, good things might happen. And good thing did happen, as soon after that, the first goal the match was scored it was Dembele to Alba to Griezmann. It came from sustained pressure from Barca, and it was good work from Dembele and Alba to create some space up the flank. Poor defending though by Ferran Varos, who had three men for those two, and no one followed Alba immediately up the line. Griezmann crashed and put it in the back of the net with the heel flick. For Griezmann, that's five goals in his last seven matches, and third straight game with a goal. A lot of people are pointing to that Jorge Valdano interview for Griezmann that he seems to have gotten this weight lifted off his chest. But for me, I think it's just finding form and finding the back of the net. And the team is also winning and not conceding goals. So everything is working all at the same time. And I don't really pinpoint that to having started with the interview and being something personal for Griezmann. Could just be in the bigger picture of things that Griezmann does have that weight lifted. Soon after the second goal was scored, Griezmann instead handed it off to Brothwaite because it was Alba to Dembele to Brothwaite, once again working down the left side. It was a simple cross in from Dembele and Brothwaite getting on the end of it. Dembele hitting it with a ton of pace and so Brothwaite just had to get a touch to redirect it in. It was a bit past the Danish forward and he did well to get the touch that he did. That's four in three matches for Brothwaite and the fastest Barca player to three Champions League goals coming in 91 minutes. Better yet, according to Opta, the 33 uninterrupted Barca passes prior to this goal was the longest sequence in this year's Champions League. And before 30 minutes were even done in the match, Barca got their third. Trinchao with a pretty good touch freed up Brothwaite, who was brought down in the box. And Dembele with his right foot, not the left. I guess for Dembele, because of that two-footedness, you always have to question with which foot he delivers a cross, a corner, or for this time, it was a penalty kick, and it came on his right boot and comfortably slotting it home. I think the one and only downside from that first half was that Busquets did manage to pick up an unnecessary yellow card on a poor tackle on Somalia. And for me, for what I've seen from Busquets in this match, certainly he and Pianis completely controlled possession, and there isn't much to talk about in terms of his overall performance, but there are just too many yellows from him, and it does happen because he's just a step slower than he once was, and sometimes it does feel like he's turned into an older giraffe trying to figure out his way on the counterattack, and he does foul too many opponents. So with the expectation that I think Busquets does start against Cadiz on the weekend, Coleman took he and Jordi Alba off for half time, bringing in Frankie de Jong and Junior Firpo. I would have preferred to see Alenia at that stage, but we're kind of splitting hairs because I think the idea all along was to insert Alenia, as you saw in the 65th minute, along with Puj, and move Frankie de Jong back to the center back position where, as we've talked about, until Araujo is back into health and Umtiti will have to get an update on his Barca B friendly, it's going to be de Jong as that third center back option behind Ling Lei and Mingueza. As I said in the 65th minute of what was in that second half a pretty dull affair for Barca, they clearly up 3 nothing, took in the second gear, didn't want to get anybody injured, completely understandable. So Ling Lei and Griezmann do come off for Elena and Puj in the 65th, which gives Dembele the armband, which is interesting because not only was he looking good already in the match, and at that point, just after Elena and Puj come on and he gets the armband, he completely undresses Blasic, and he had three more chances, or even four, in that second half, just looking so, so dangerous for Barcelona and full of confidence as well. I'll get to him more in a second, though. Because Ferran Varus did play better in that second half. Yes, it was that Barca took their foot off the gas a bit and also did insert, by the 65th minute, four of their five subs, so giving a different look to the squad as well. But a hold-up forward led to Ferran Varus' best chance of the match through Batarina, a young Croatian forward with some promise and with some hunger. And not to point figures, because you know I would love to defend La Masia as best I can, but Ferran Varos were having a bit more success going through the middle when Elena and Puj came on. And again, that target striker in Bad Arena was giving Mingueza more trouble than we had seen in what has been a tremendous debut for Barcelona. Three matches, 
three clean sheets, having started and played and barely getting a foot wrong. So Mingretha, tons of credit to him, but I'm interested to see what's going to happen moving forward. I would also like to note when Batarina came on, Langley had gone off. And as we've seen so far against Ososuna and Dinamo Kiev, Lengle is the one who really does have to have the responsibility of tracking and staying with the target number nine. And Mingueth is the one who comes to lean forward and basically reversing the roles with PK, where PK stays at home and Lengle goes out to cut out counterattacks and takes chances with his legs. And with PK out, those roles are reversed with Mingueth with Lengle dealing with the physicality and the danger of a target man with Magritte being able to get forward and try to cut out those balls, which he's done a tremendous job doing. So as I said, it was quite interesting to see that once those roles were once again changed, and now it's Magritte dealing with the target striker and De Jong as the one trying to cut things out on that left side, basically staying a little more at home with De Jong on the left and Magritte on the right. And I almost want to write it off because it is a situation that I don't see because he'll be pairing with Langley. I don't see Magritte being in that situation very often. A few minutes after that, in the 74th minute, there was a miss from Trinchao. Point blank range. Has to put it in the back of the net. Has to get his first Barca goal. So I think this is that time to talk about Dembele and Trinchao. I think as supporters, we always need to find the players and we want to point out the players that need to do better. If Barca aren't getting bad results, it's because players are struggling. And so who are those players who could be giving more? In this game, Dembele is almost free of criticism. Yes, he had that one error where he should have scored instead of passing off to Puj, but I actually like the idea that he wanted to give Puj the opportunity to get himself on the scoreline. Because for Puj, his minutes this season are going to be in direct competition as we know. Now that he's going to be playing in that number 10, where is his best position, so it does make sense that Coleman is putting him out there. But he's in direct competition with Messi, Coutinho, and Pedri at that spot. It's a difficult place to be in, and with Brothwaite out there, I guess you could actually add Griezmann to that with Messi being more on the right. But the point persists. He's still fourth on the depth chart, whether it's Messi or Griezmann in there. But minutes, as we knew, were going to be hard to come by for Puj. And if he's going to get those minutes, he's going to have to put the ball in the back of the net. It's completely understandable that Dembele didn't have all of that going on in his head when he tried to pass to Puj for the open goal. But as I said, I don't put it as an indictment of Dembele. He had a wonderful afternoon, and I'm glad to see that the criticism is drying up. As we knew, all he had to do was get healthy, and all that garbage about football brain, and I'll continue to say that you always throw people out there that he has poor decision making. You see when he has a complete dominance physically, speed-wise, and all of those little intangibles over an opponent, what a Dembele playing with confidence is. Trinchao is actually getting an even worse rep because we're comparing him in this match directly to Dembele on the other side. Trinchao did have his misses. His touch wasn't great at times. He was making mistakes. He is only 20, and he played his first 90 minutes of a match for Barcelona in his career. So I think there also needs to be an understanding that time should be given to Trinchao. And the idea that he's going to immediately come in and hit the ground running shouldn't be expected of him. Now, when you're talking about the transfers like Coutinho, like Griezmann, even like an experienced player like Brothwaite, Trinchao is still in the infancy of his career, still just 20. And we can't take the idea that just because Fatih and Pedri look like they're seasoned professionals, that every young player is going to come in and operate right away. Trinchao, I think, gets the appropriate minutes for where he is in his Barcelona journey. And obviously, I'm not going to write him off already. And I'm also not going to say that, oh, the deal with his agent with Jorge Mendes, that he completely fleeced Barcelona, forcing them to make that deal so he could do better on the Fati. I'm not subscribing to that conspiracy at all. I may have said it, but I give no credence at all. Shut it down on that conspiracy between Trichau, Mendez, Fati, and all that. Throw it out. That said, Trichau, while he hasn't put the ball in the back of the net yet, a lot of the things that he's doing wrong are teachable things, and that gives me a little bit of hope on the player. There have been people calling for Conrad De La Fuente coming in for Trinchao. I even said that he probably should have started on the left. I actually didn't have Dembele as one of the starters, but I understand why Coleman, as I said at the beginning of this, put Dembele as a starter. That said, Conrad did get his second appearance for FC Barcelona and second in the Champions League, coming on in the 80th minute for Brothwaite, who once again has his third straight tremendous performance. Such a surprise to see that Barca are better with a number nine. But Conrad comes on pushing Dembele in the middle and he takes a slot up on the left. Didn't really have too much to do in that final 10 minutes as Ferran Varos in those final minutes of the game were fighting for at least that consolation goal. And good for Ferran Varos. They played well against Juventus last week. And we have to remember that with Dinamo Kiev and Ferran Varos both on one point in the group, they are fighting for a spot in the Europa League 
potentially. They are fighting for third place in this group, so it does matter to them. It's not like their Champions League campaign is completely over and they can just roll over. They're fighting for something, and it was good to see, at least on the Hungarians, that they didn't let that match fall away. And for Barcelona, it was competition for Alenia, for Puj, as I said. I didn't really like their defensive positioning. They could have done better there. But overall, I'm happy to see that Alenia and Puj not only are getting minutes, but are offensively doing a few things. And it is helter-skelter, but I'd like to see that they're getting their minutes and earning their time. And I know that they might get more experience going out on loan, but if Coleman is going to continue to rotate and they're earning minutes, I would still prefer for them to actually stay in January, both of them to stay in January, if they are going to get some spare minutes here or there from Coleman. So overall, it was all the plays we wanted to see in the match, a comprehensive 3 nothing win, and now next week against Juventus, it's all about getting some kind of result, a draw is fine, even losing one nothing is fine, it just, it just can't be a defeat by more than two goals, so I'm interested to see what Coleman does, and if he continues to rest Messi, if he continues to maybe give Griezmann a rest and bring Coutinho back. We'll have to see what that looks like. But we'll definitely be here on the weekend to talk about where Barca need to continue to get results, and that is in La Liga. It's Cadiz on the weekend. So make sure you come back here, give us a like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. And as always, until next time, Forza Barca.